This is Lesson 1 for Module 1, History of Wind Energy and Power Generation. The contents of this presentation, a brief wind power history, local wind power history with windmills, well pumps, and early farming usage, also a brief history of electrical power generation, and finally the methods of generating electricity such as hydroelectric plants, coal-fired plants, wind power, solar power, and nuclear power plants. Brief wind power history. From 10,000 to 1,000 BC, large and small sailing ships in various parts of the world are developed and make use of wind power. In 200 BC, wind power machines are developed throughout Persia. In 250 AD, Roman windmills are developed. During the 1400s and continuing through the present day, the Dutch use windmills to pump water from low-lying areas. Wind power is used extensively in conjunction with pumps to drain swampy areas and provide more farmland. It was also developed for irrigation or the transfer of water from one place to another. From 1850 to about 1950, United States farmers used windmills to grind grain, pump water, and saw wood. The rotating shafts of the windmills are used to power a variety of small equipment. In 1866, Beloit, Wisconsin Eclipse Windmill Factory opens. From 1887 to 1888, the first mechanically automated wind turbine is used to produce electricity. During the 1920s, George Darius of France invents the vertical axis wind turbine. It is referred to as the egg beater windmill, as you see in this top photo. In 1941, the first 1 million watt wind turbine is created and had two nearly 80 foot blades and sat on a 120 foot lattice tower. It was built by Smith Putnam. In 1954, the first wind turbine is developed for connection to the power grid. In 1970, NASA starts wind turbine research in Ohio. In 1981, the Mod 2, which is the first 2.5 million watt, that is th about 3,300 horsepower, wind turbine is developed with a 200 foot tower and a blade width of over 300 feet. In 1991, Vindeby of Denmark creates the first offshore wind farm. In 2003, Wales in the United Kingdom makes their offshore wind farm. In 2009, a 6 million watt turbine with a rotor diameter of 413 feet is installed in Emden, Germany. In 2012, 134 one and one half million watt horizontal axis wind turbines, or HOTS, are erected on the California Ridge in Champaign and Vermilion County, Illinois, as seen here in this bottom photo. The earliest account of windmills is from about 200 BC. The Persians built these windmills in order to make use of the northern, that is June to October, winds, as shown in the top illustration. You can see this is built into a cavernous area where winds would, could pass through and be directed into the windmill, and it would be used for the mechanical motion by ropes and pulley attachments. They would use the rotating power of the windmills to grind grain and irrigate water by use of pumps from other areas. These windmills were usually built using sails instead of vanes and were also built upon a vertical axis. Various windmills were developed throughout the world. Other early vertical axis windmills were used to pump water from wells, as seen in the bottom illustration. This bottom photo shows a vertical axis wind turbine. It's used to capture wind, rotate this cog wheel, and this cog wheel and shaft is attached to a an open well and it has buckets that would go down and scoop water from the bottom of the well. Very basic but useful system. 
Horizontal axis windmills were utilized by the Greeks and later the Dutch. It should be noted here and now that wind turbines are not windmills. A windmill is a building or structure with sails or vanes that turns in the wind and is used for mechanical power. A wind turbine has blades that utilize lift, similar to an airplane wing design, and they rotate a hub and shaft for the purpose of generating electricity. Local wind power history. Well pumps. As mentioned on the previous slide, windmills were often used to pump water. Some larger windmills were used to pump water into reservoirs for local towns. As you can see here in this 1878 sketch, this is an example of one of those systems used in Fairmount, Illinois. The brick portion at the bottom held the town's water supply. The entire structure was nearly 60 feet tall. You see the man standing on the shaft. It's pretty interesting that this being from 1878, really when the Industrial Revolution was really coming along, they still had a means of pumping water efficiently without burning coal or using large engines. Very innovative at the time. Local wind power history and early farming. Wind power was used in farming and is still used today to some extent. Windmills were often used to pump water for crops, livestock, and even for area water supplies, as well as to run equipment for repair and construction purposes. The photo shows a windmill that is used currently to pump water from a well. And it's an older design. The windmill would rotate in the wind, turning a gearbox that changes the motion of the rotor into a very slow and high torque rotation and that connects to a crank thus changing it into a linear motion and this rod this would move up and down goes to the top of the well head and the handle's been replaced by just a linkage and it will continuously pump water up out of the ground and a drain feeds any unused water back down into the well so it has a continuous flow of water coming up out of the well as long as there is wind. It's very convenient. Also with early farming, from about the 1930s around the Great Depression, farmers and other people in the rural population often bought what was called a wind charger. The wind charger was basically an early residential wind turbine. They would use it to charge 6-volt batteries, sometimes 32-volt batteries, depending on the design. And they really caught on because the rural areas up until the 40s or 50s were not connected to the electrical grid. So if they wanted their radios to operate or any other electrical equipment, they weren't able to. So they would buy these wind charger systems. And they would buy specific appliances similar to what we use in an RV today. It was a lower voltage like 12 or 6 or 32 volt system at the time specially designed radios to operate on that voltage and they would use those would basically have power at their residence for free once the grid reached out to the rural communities and the rural areas they became less popular A brief history of electrical power generation. The pioneering era of power generation came about some time after the discovery of electromagnetic induction. This property of physics deals with electrical current being generated within a coil of wire when placed within a changing or moving magnetic field. After many improvements to this basic generator to increase output, practical electric generators were developed. By 1890, there were two practical ways to generate electricity. One method was to generate direct current. Another method generated alternating current. As you can see in the photo, with electromagnetic induction, a magnet, permanent magnet in this case, must be moving across the coil 
which relative to the coil it would be a changing magnetic field because the magnet is passing by the coil and when this occurs a current would be created or an electron flow would occur in the wire in this closed circuit this is electromagnetic induction it is the basic principle where mechanical motion or physical motion is changed into electrical energy The great debate at the time was whether to use DC generators or AC generators. This is to the 1890s and around that, uh, around that time. Direct current provides electricity similar to that of a battery, and it was also considered to be less dangerous. Alternating current was also easy to produce, but some were skeptical of it. In the end, alternating current won due to the simple fact that it could be transmitted long distances. Another plus was that line voltages could be increased or decreased as needed for long distance transmission and for the voltages needed for industrial, commercial, and residential requirements. The photo at right shows a utility transformer on a power pole. This particular transformer is used to power halogen street lights. There's the transformer, the high voltage coming in, the lower voltage going out to the lights means of generating electricity. Hydroelectric power plants use dams to hold water. This stored water is drained through tunnels and flows through turbines which spin in proportion to the force of the water. These turbines turn the electric generators. An advanced control system is used to monitor the flow of water and keep the turbines and generators turning at the proper rate. Coal-fired power plants use coal to superheat water this water becomes greatly pressurized in its superheated state. This pressure is then released against a turbine which spins and then in turn runs the electric generators. Electrical power plants of this type have been around for well over 100 years. Wind power farms are much cleaner and safer than other electrical power generation methods. The experimentation with wind power generation arose in the 1890s especially became popular in rural areas during the Great Depression. Large, modern wind farms are usually used to aid the electrical grid. Solar power is also cleaner and safer than other electrical power generation methods. They're usually used to aid the electrical grid and are somewhat costly to purchase and maintain. Also the output versus cost is another factor. Nuclear power plants use controlled nuclear fission to create an immense amount of heat. The nuclear fission rods, usually uranium-235, are very hot and are used to boil water or a similar liquid. The rest of the plant's operation is similar to that of coal-fired plants. Another method of generating electricity is the use of thermal solar power plants. However, these are very large, expensive, and do not generate as much power. Key terms for this lesson, alternating current, or AC, direct current, which is called DC, coal-fired power plants, electromagnetic induction, green technology, hydroelectric power stations, the Illinois Green Economy Network, kilowatt, which is a unit of power, nuclear power stations, solar power, wind power density, wind power farms, wind turbines, and windmills. You need to complete the assigned reading if you have not already. Finish the History of Wind Energy paper, and you will need to take the Module 1 Lesson 1 quiz as soon as possible. As you may have seen on the outline, there are two more lessons for this unit.